Don't forget, you can reach the latest episode of Potomac Watch anytime. Just ask your smart speaker. Play the Opinion Potomac Watch podcast. From the Opinion pages of The Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. I'm Kim Strassel here with Mene Ukwebarua and Bill McGurn. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer welcomed back to the Senate on Monday Mitch McConnell and John Fetterman. McConnell, minority leader, age 81, had been recovering for about six weeks from a fall in which he sustained a concussion and a fractured rib. Mr. Fetterman, age 53, suffered a stroke while running to win the Pennsylvania Senate seat last fall and then soon after arriving in Washington was hospitalized at Walter Reed to be treated for clinical depression. Their return gets the Senate back up to close to full capacity, but not quite. As we talked about a little bit last week, Senator Dianne Feinstein from California remains out indefinitely because of ongoing treatment for complications related to shingles. Her absence means a deadlocked Judiciary Committee and a halt to the Democratic Senate's primary ambition of getting through more of Biden's judicial nominees. So, Manet, we saw a very interesting move this week. Chuck Schumer and Judiciary Chairman Dick Durbin suggested Republicans have a duty as a matter of senatorial courtesy to abide by Feinstein's request that she be temporarily replaced on the judiciary until she returns. Republicans are already lining up to refuse. Many, I was kind of chortling a little bit when I heard that request, as these would be the same Democrats who have single-handedly turned judicial confirmations into a jungle and a war with the single-minded goal of blocking GOP nominees. I mean, these are the folks that brought us the Brett Kavanaugh spectacle, the folks that have almost to the last all pledged to break the filibuster, perhaps with the goal of stacking the Supreme Court. Now here they are asking for Republicans to aid them in whipping through a new organizing resolution that will allow them to push through a Biden's nominees. Is it all that surprising that Republicans are saying no? Uh, Not surprising in the least, (laughs) and I couldn't agree with you more. I had the exact same two points of reference as soon as I heard that the Democrats were maneuvering to try to get Republicans to agree to a temporary replacement for Feinstein, and that is the specifically the Kavanaugh president, but let's not forget Amy Coney Barrett as well, who faced essentially character assassination regarding her faith and her adopted children while she was seeking to be appointed to the Supreme Court. And also Harry Reid, the former uh, Senate majority leader's move to end the filibuster for judicial nominees below the Supreme Court level, which began an arms race between the two parties in terms of really fighting and really escalating in terms of their process to get their own judicial nominees appointed and also to block those of the other party. And so asking the other party to concede anything when it comes to uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee and specifically having the ability to weigh in and potentially block egregious uh, nominees is completely beyond the pale. And that's because of a a war of escalation that Democrats have been the first movers on in many cases. But I do think it makes sense that they are reacting this urgently to Feinstein's absence. It's now reached a point where it isn't clear if or when she's going to be able to return. The committee is deadlocked. And that really is slowing down a process that had been running very smoothly for the Biden administration and Senate Democrats. They managed to confirm, I believe, about 119 judges during the Biden presidency so far, which is a little bit faster than Donald Trump's pace of confirming judges during his one term as president, which was already a record setting pace. And so with their one senator majority on that committee, they've been able to move very quickly. But being deadlocked will mean they're going to have to slow that down and potentially face the proposition of appointing somewhat more moderate nominees. Go figure. Historically, you would think that would be what you would do if you had close to parity in the Senate, that you would try to get appointees who theoretically could clear both parties or at least be acceptable to one member of the opposing party on the committee. But that is not the project that Democrats are undertaking. They generally have been appointing very young and progressive judges, and they don't want to have to concede the ideological bona fides for the sake of uh, peeling off one or two Republican votes. And so it really is a desperate quest to get a replacement for Feinstein so that that 
appointment process for federal judges can resume. Yeah, I think that's a really important point about the fact that it isn't as if nothing can continue happening on the Judiciary Committee. You could have judges that bring people together. I've been very struck by Republican unity on that point. It's interesting to me, Bill, those who have come out against this have kind of fallen into two different camps. There have been some who just outright have said that it's not their responsibility to help Democrats confirm activist judicial nominees. Those are folks like Tom Cotton and Marsha Blackburn. But there's also been a kind of crew of people that have suggested that this is an unseemly effort by Democrats to, in fact, force Feinstein off the Judiciary Committee. And those that have bipartisan relationships with her have taken some umbrage to that. One of them was Senator Chuck Grassley, who is also 89 years old. (laughs) Uh, I'll just quote him. He says, I think it's a shame that the Democratic Party is supposed to be for the little person and the women and all that. But they denied her being chairman of the committee and are trying to force her out of office because she's old, said Chuck Grassley. Susan Collins said something very similar about how she was not going to support a campaign to force Feinstein off the Judiciary Committee. Whatever the reasoning, though, one of the things you've heard a lot of Republicans saying is, to Monet's point, is that, look, you guys want to keep moving judges. There are plenty of people that Biden has nominated or can nominated that we can all support. One example of that is the committee did approve Matthew Brookman, who is a GOP-supported appointee for the Indiana District Court seat. The problem, though, that Democrats have is that Biden, as he's gone along with progressives, has nominated a bunch of more radical judges to be appointed. And those are the ones that are sitting in the Judiciary Committee now, uh, a number of them out of the about a dozen who are frozen in place there. I mean, Bill isn't the point here that Democrats are perfectly free to continue with their judicial confirmation process. They just have to get some judges nominated that are qualified and that can get GOP support. That is the key point. But President Biden has made clear he's not about that compromise. He's increasingly made identity politics a fundamental cornerstone of these appointments. And now they're vulnerable. You look at Senator Fetterman when he was running, we were told nothing wrong with him, you know, be fine to have him as a senator. We have to stipulate the Senate is a unique place in American society. It is probably the best place if you're handicapped in any way to continue work. As long as you can be wheeled in for a vote, you can do your job. So it's not like an, a governor or something. Yes, you might not be able to debate and all that, but I think it would make sense in some cases to vote for these people over the opponent if you had in a tight race and you think he'll at least be a reliable vote. The problem is that comes with the price. What if now they're finding fine science not there to cast the vote? So what do we do? And turns out Republicans have a huge say over whether they can replace her. And I think they're inclined not to. So I don't think we'll see Joe Biden moderate. I think what we'll see is increasing attacks on MAGA Republicans rejecting good judges um, and so forth. So it's kind of an interesting argument to watch. Like so many things abolishing the filibuster, the Democrats are now paying the price for running these people and saying there's no problem with having them. Now they find out there's a cost and they really don't like it. Yeah, Manet, briefly here, and we'll give you the last word. I was struck that even some of what you'd call the Senate deal-making caucus, Republicans who have done some legislating across the aisle, have also been unwilling to do this. And one that stuck out to me was Tom Tillis, a Republican from North Carolina, who's actually voted for a fair number of Biden judges. And his argument is that he's not going to be willing to break precedent by appointing a temporary replacement unless Democrats agree to continue to abide by some longstanding Senate norms, in particular the blue slip process, which is this tradition by which senators can block nominees appointed to their home state. Democrats have recently suggested they might abolish that process. Tillis has suggested that if they might agree not to, that maybe there could be a deal made here. What do you think? Is there room for some sort of deal and or should Republicans do that? Last word. I think Tillis is right to uh, defend the blue slip process, and it is one of these old conventions which uh, 
over which compromises could be reached, allowing parties to appoint judges, but making sure that the judges are to a certain degree ideologically aligned with the regions that they're being appointed to represent. But I don't think that trading the reinstatement of that process for a temporary replacement for Feinstein would be a good deal for Republicans. They frankly have a lot of leverage in her absence, and I think their constituents want to see them being able to weigh in on some of the appointments of these very progressive judges. And unless Democrats are able to offer something commensurate to that, something much bigger, I don't think it would make sense to agree to that kind of deal. Yeah, I think I have to agree also because it's unclear that even if they said, yes, we'll continue to abide by that, how long would that last? Something for Republicans to think about. Thank you, Manet. Thank you, Bill. We thank our listeners and remind you that we are here every day. We'll be back tomorrow. You can email us at pwpodcast at wsj.com. If you like the show, please hit that subscribe button.